What's your name? Trey Dante Hill. Man, Trey Dante Hill, man, that's my brother, cousin, goddamn childhood friend, whatever you want to call it. You feel me? Blood, blood can't make it no closer. All right, uh, as far as his work ethic, man, dude, just an all out grinder, man. It's just like his work ethic is, is all off pain, you feel me? And I just feel like that, that could be like one of the best things you can do about it pain and just shit that happened in your past. Nashville, Tennessee. Well, where I grew up at, you could always see a view of the Titan Stadium. Always give you hope and dreams. Got a bridge in the background. Little Shoney's out in front. Tennessee Titan Stadium, Nissan Stadium. Dixon County High School, man. Great place, great, a lot of memories, man. A lot of memories, you know. The Cougar Walk, running 40s, doing all this stuff. It's, it's probably what a flash created. Had a bunch of friends I made here. Man, just really can't beat stuff like this, man. That's where we used to play. They used to hold tailgates for us. A lot of pride, a lot of fans, a lot of help, man. This city is one of the reasons why I really truly believe whites and blacks really could get along because a lot of people helped me and took me far away from here, you know? Crazy views of the track. That's where I first started running track, man. Dixon County High School, track and field. Tristan Logan and Trey Dante is my nephew. Um, what do you think about Trey Dante Hill's work ethic? He's great. He's doing a great job. I love him death and I want to keep it up. What do you think about his future and what it holds? His future is big. There's no limit to it. Whatever he want to do, he wants to put his mind to it, he can do it. And what do you think his biggest flaw is? His biggest flaw, he got a big head. But the things that he's doing right now, he needs a big head. My name is Jack Fields, and I'm Trey Dante Hill's uncle. Uh, what do you think about Trey Dante Hill's work ethic? I think he have a hard work ethic. What do you think about Trey Dante's future and where he's going? He has a bright future. He can go wherever he want to go. Um, what do you think is Trey Dante Hill's biggest flaw? Trey Dante Hill. What's your name, and who are you to T. Hill? Uh, my name is Styles Quarter, and I am one of T. Hill's greatest friends. Uh, I know T. Hill because he approached, you know, going to Mount Sac as one of my choices because I was looking for a Juco at the time when I, you know, was hanging out with him. And, uh, you know, he pretty much got me on out there. We, he came out there a few times, you know, slept in my place, you know, we didn't, we didn't been through it all, you know. Okay. You know, that's how it is when you're going through a struggle, surprise <laughs> How would you describe his worth ethic? Uh, T Hill's work at this um, actually great. Excuse my language. Uh, you know he, when, you know he was staying with me. You know every morning six a.m. He going to job. You know after that, all right, let's do letters. And he's always been like this as I know. He's been almost five plus years. You know he was all he was always like that before that. You know so T Hill's work at the is NFL material honestly. So you know they sleep on. Him. What do you think about his future? You know, his future is still, it's in progress. You know, it's still leveling up. You know, he's, he's not done with what he's doing. Okay, and last one. What do you think his flaw is? Okay, so biggest flaw, you know, I'm trying to get him to stop eating meat. 
you know, so he can get his joints back right, you know. Because, you know, they're right, but when you, you know, take some of that process, you know, junk off, you know, off your body, you know, you can get free up, you know, take that toxins off, you know, get you loosened up, flexible. But, you know, other than that, you know, he still, you know, he still, he got it going, you know, he's still learning, you know. But that's, that's, every, that's everybody, you know, and like, T. Hill, keep doing your thing, bro. I'm supporting you, you know. You know, I didn't see your struggle firsthand. You feel we done slept on the floor. So just keep going. Keep, you know, keep yourself, you know, keep your mind clear. Tunnel vision. Don't let no distractions. What's your name and who are you to T Hill? Um, Antonio Allen, a uh, former teammate and close friend. Okay. So what do you think about T Hill's worth ethic? Uh, work ethic, he's relentless. He's not gonna stop. Uh as far as working and, and all of that, he's going to get it in, until he gets it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's going to work until he gets it. Okay, what do you think his future holds? Uh, Really, whatever he desires. You know, I told him I told him a long time ago, that's what he really want to do, just, just go ahead and do it. Go full tilt towards it. And that's his mindset from the jump, so he, he's definitely along with that. Whatever, whatever he wants. Hello, how are you today? I'm blessed to yourself. Um, who are you and what are you to try down to Hill? I am Trinata Hill's mother. I birthed him May the 9th, 1995, at your Hospital. And what's your name? My name is LaDonna Hill. What do you think about your son's work ethic? I think my son's work ethic is very strong. What do you think his future holds for him? I think his future holds all the success that is due to him and beyond. I'm his uncle. Okay. And how do you feel about T. Hill's work ethic? great he's a hell of a workout of he just he's too much for me i'm i don't he just keep going and going i think i gotta energize it might have an energizing uh battery in his back <laughs> okay what do you feel about what his future holds hey great future as long as you just keep on going and don't give up don't worry about what doesn't happen don't worry about where he's at just keep on going he's got a great future ahead of it i believe that not just because he's my nephew okay i trust that what do you think is his flaw I really can't say cause I speak high on him so I can't really say nothing bad about that or whatever. I just think he's a great person and just gotta keep on going and don't let nothing stop even to his flaws. Just keep on going and everything's gonna be all right. That's all I got to say about that. And you have anything to say to him? I love you. Keep on going. I know you probably thought you were gonna make it as far as you done made it from where you came from. And look at you now. Look at you now. And keep on going. Be bad about it. Just do it and be all you can be. And Uncle Reggie loves you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm his uncle. And what's your name? Colin Phillips. All right. What do you think about his work ethic? I think he has one of the most amazing work ethics I've ever seen. It's sheer determination and drive. And it's hard to find in a person. What do you think about his future? I think he has a very bright future. Extremely bright. Uh, the sky's the limit for this kid, man. The sky's the limit. What do you think about what is his biggest flaw? I don't think he has a flaw. I think uh, if I had to maybe say anything, it would be that I'm watching the growth from player to student of the game. And that's the ultimate level. There, there, there are two different, I mean, there are two different types of players. You know, you've got those that just play. And then you got students of the game, and those students of the game become champions. And I think that's the level that my nephew is at. Maybe a little bit biased, <laughs> but that's what I see. Appreciate you. You hit strong, and when you're trying to get a point over to you, uh, you really have to explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think about my work ethic? You're a hard worker. You strive hard. But that's the way you was raised. That's you know? right. That's right. And then, what do you think my future holds? Mm, big good things. <laughs> and I look at your videos and I see how hard you work and you're so dedicated. 
I think you're going all the way to the top. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you, and I love you. I love this you. This is my granny, Jane Mayberry, you know what I'm saying? Hey! <laughs> Who raised me and taught me everything to be, so. Thank you. Um, yo, you, you ain't got to thank me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. All right, okay. What's your name and what are you? what's your relation to Tredonta Hill? Uh, my name is Mar, and I'm his older cousin. All right. What do you think about Tredonta Hill's work ethic? It's, it's, he works hard. He works hard because it's something like, for real, to real deal have that much footwork and move that fast and your nose that big, you got to be able to work so hard because I've been knowing him since he was young, since the nose started. And I don't know if it's an allergic reaction that never went away <laughs> on what it is, but that's Mount Everest on his face and we know it, but he works so hard. <laughs> I'm done with this nigga, yo. Hey. I'm done with this. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Let him finish. Okay, Let him finish. what's up? Okay, what do you think of what do you think Tredonte Hill's future holds? This shit hold a lot. <laughs> because if he can get some Kleenex, he can get a Kleenex deal. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna turn clean next to bed sheets. <laughs> Cause all the smoke and shit that's out is gonna put you inside and shit. <laughs> I don't know why he got on that tight ass mask right now, but hey, look good, don't it? Hey, right. That's I'm, I'm okay. Stupid. Last question: okay. What do you think Tredonte Hill's biggest flaw is? Shit. Yeah, I know y'all gonna think. I'm going to say it's his nose and shit. And to be honest, I am. It's his nose. <laughs> it's his, nose. his nose is so big. Like, how you go through life with a nose like that? Cousin, man. Jamarius Hastings. Shout out my cousin, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk, dude. Flawless. He been working ever since. Ever since we was young. He always, I don't play football. I don't play football. I don't play football. It was him. He always did. And look at him now. He's a f***ing general. This nigga out here, man. He's a general, man. 100K, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You don't know who this guy is. Show my muscles off, too, you know what I'm saying? Everybody around here buff. Everybody around here buff, you know what I'm saying? Got six pack. I got one pack on him. You know what I mean? Look at me. Ooh. Flex. Ooh. I can't flex like this nigga. Flash that. Uh, after high school, uh, what college or colleges did you go to? Uh, after high school, I left Nashville to go to California to Orange Coast College in Orange Coast, in Orange County, California. Then I went to Mount Sac in Walnut, California. Then I transferred to Silver City, New Mexico to go to West New Mexico University. And finally to Tabor College uh, in little old Kansas, you know. Uh, what would you say you had, out of your whole college career, statistically speaking, what was your best game? Uh, I would have to say two games. My junior college best game at Mount Sac when I played against Riverside in the SoCal Championship. Um, I might have had like three or four receptions, over 100 yards, and uh, it reared us to get to the finals and win a state championship and finish number two in the nation. And uh, I think Tarleton, from my university days at Western New Mexico, I had received for like 156 and like, I had all purpose 200 and scored a key touchdown when I had a quad contusion that I had beat throughout the week. And uh, that was probably my best game and biggest stat line. In college period, what was your best memory? Like we go back and look back like, this is it for me, man. I love this. Something you'll never forget. Uh, something I'll never forget. Mount Sac, when I went to Mount Sac and I I was considered not able to catch the ball and Coach Bobby kinda took me in and brought me in one day and taught me how to run routes and he kinda told me like, you know how to catch the ball but you just don't know where the ball coming from. You don't understand the routes and concepts of what you're doing. You fast, so once you understand that, he felt like that I would be unstoppable 
And I think he just took me out there and he taught me the plays and he taught me where the ball was coming from and where my eyes need to be locked on. And I feel like just for college and like football, like that was the most important thing for me and something that made my game jump from just where it was to a whole new level. It made me the playmaker that I was able to be in what you see on the film today. My name is Bobby Purcell. I am the offensive coordinator at Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, California. I know Tio because he played for me uh, back in uh, when we won the uh, state title back in 2014. I've uh, been a privilege to be his coach and I'm glad he picked our school. <laughs> what was Tio's worth I think going into the season? You know, um, being in the, you know, co coaching for as long as I have, uh, I, I've, you know, I, I don't like to say I, I've seen all types of plays, but I have in, in the, the JC world that, I, that I've been blessed to be a part of. But um, with T. Hill, is more of a kind of a, a coach's uh, blessing to have because the only questions he ever asked me was, Coach, what did you need me to do? How you need me to do it? And when do you want me to do it? He rarely ever questioned, um, you know, theory or philosophies when we're getting prepared for a, a season. But the best thing about him was not just asking those questions. He wanted to be a student of the game. He wanted to learn. He wanted to know why. You know, his intentions were genuine when he asked questions. And he really wanted to be a student of the game and not just utilize his talents. And we all know how fast he is, man. Was there any uh, flaws, you know, that you saw? And did he change them throughout the season? You know what? He was his worst enemy. And, and, I, and I say that because... He was his biggest critic, just like all, all good athletes. You know, he would, he would get down on himself. And one of the biggest things that he also did well was he overcame it. But he would always beat himself up if he did. He was too much of a perfectionist, yeah. you know. Uh, he, sometimes he just didn't let it happen. And, hey, it's okay. He would, he would, he, I mean, he came back and he was able to come back next play, next play, next play. But he would always remember the mistake he made. And the bad part about it was, you know, it, it didn't affect it. It didn't, it didn't affect his play or his confidence. But I just wish that, you know, sometimes I would think he wasn't enjoying it. Like he wasn't enjoying the moment. Yeah. You know, like um, the truth be said, we wouldn't we wouldn't have won the 2014 title if he wouldn't have made uh, this this touchdown catch that we needed. And basically, if he didn't score, we would have lost, and yeah. which pushed us all the way into the title game. So I mean, it, it's just one of those deals that. You know, as a coach, you want your athlete to enjoy the moment. But he was so hard on himself during games or practices, you you, you question, like, is this guy having fun? Do you think he's NFL ready? I think he is. I mean, I mean, like like I said, this talent speaks for itself. Uh, the one thing that I, I can always say, he's always worked hard. He's always been one of or the hardest working guy in the room, mm -hmm. you know, when, when it came to not just being on the field and practicing, but also in the classroom when it came to, studying the plays, being a you know a student of the game and watching film. Mm, that's that's powerful, you know, coming from a coach, you know, from from a coach like yourself, you know, it's very powerful, especially one of the top JCs in the nation. You know, Mount Sac still continues to be one of the best JCs that kids go to that come across the country to go to also, you know. So oh, you know, thank you for that. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, before T Hill got there, was there any recruitment or what did you guys have any conversations prior to that season? You know, um a good, you know, one of my relatives used to coach with me. His name is JT Neil Mata. He's now the OCC. Um, he's now he works at OCC. He's the offensive coordinator there. He was the one that had his hand in, in, in bringing uh, T. Hill over um, mm -hmm. uh, to Mount Sac. So when, uh, when he got hired on as my offensive line coach and run game coordinator, um, he, uh, he, had, he, had, you know, he had a couple kids come with him. Uh, as far as his old recruiting class, and, and we were just blessed to get him, you know, get to deal with him. Yeah, man, it is a blessing. I believe everything happens for a reason, too, you know? I think everything happens oh, for Oh, man, a... God always has a plan. Man. Whether you like it or not, it's always written, you know what I'm saying? You know, any last messages for him? You know, um, the funny part is this, and, and I keep track of him through all the social media that comes out on him, and, but the first thing I want to do is I show it to my kids. And I say, look at this guy. This guy played for us. He, 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 he hasn't given up, you know, he's still battling. He, he still, he played. Uh, one of the biggest things was uh, uh, my, my kids keep track of him as well when he had an opportunity for the XFL. Mm -hmm. And we found out that T.O. had an opportunity, you know, had an opportunity to maybe play for him. My kids were all pumped up. We went and bought gear. We were ready to go to the games and we were all excited. But, you know, he, he inspires, you know, not, not just my kids and other, other athletes, but me as a coach. 
um, I got it's like a, I'm proud. I'm proud of him. Um, uh, every time I, every time I see him posting something or somebody, or somebody posting something about him, it's like, you know, it's a joy to my heart to see someone that, 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 that still grinding and, and still believes, you know, and that, that's one of our biggest things that we did when we, you know, when we played for us was one of the biggest things we wanted to do was believe, you know, believe what no one else does, you know, and be, and, 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 and God has a plan no matter what yes, anyone else says, you know. It is in his hands, and as long as you believe, you know, you'll be all right. How did you get to Western New Mexico? How did they hear about you? Uh, I actually had an offer from Utah when I was going, when I was leaving Mount Sac in the fall and the spring, and I kind of messed that up. So, like, Western New Mexico was hitting me all through the fall, and I wasn't really paying attention to them because, you know, I wanted to go D1. Then they kind of, like, talked to me in the spring in between where I had kind of messed up with my grades with Utah and shoot and going into the spring they kind of talked to me and told me what kind of requirements I needed and what kind of classes I needed and I kind of got in contact with Utah too so like I wasn't really interested in going to Western at first and then after the spring I got my grades together but I fell short one of the classes for Utah so I uh I was going through some things, man. Mainly, I got bed bugs and I couldn't continue to live in my house at uh, Mount Sac uh, at Walnut Heights. So I just pretty much picked up and went to Western. You know what I'm saying? That was my opportunity. The offensive coordinator pretty much gave me a chance. Uh, and that's what led to me getting the, you wanna press that? That's what led to me getting to where I was as far as we're getting with Western New Mexico. It was really a blessing in disguise, ultimately. like. It was uh, everything I needed. They was kind of like the top offense in the nation in all categories. They had a, um, a strand of receivers that went All-American before the dude that went All-American that year. So, so after Western New Mexico, you know, you had your, you had your couple, you had your years there. Um, Why did you transfer to Tabor? Uh, I actually ended up redshirting at Western New Mexico uh, going into that year, that fall, and I didn't know anything about it. I kind of got ruled and eligible by the NCAA out of nowhere. So I stayed with that coach, Coach Murphy, who I thought was going to stay there. And then he kind of like, as sad as it is to say, bailed on us and like left us there. And I mean, I know that's the game at this point, but then I didn't kind of understand. But I got cool with the head coach when he left and the head coach was just, he just had my back all the way through and through, man. He seen how hard I worked and he loved what I was about. So I just took that in and I kind of ran with it. And so um, the following year, we got a new offensive coordinator in the spring who didn't really think that I was a playmaker and that I can make the plays or he didn't really think I was good at all. He didn't think I was really fast. And, um, you know, I kind of, I played the whole spring, but I missed the spring with concussion. <clears throat> and so that hurt my chances even more. So following in the fall, I kind of picked up, I went hard, earned my position with the new OC. And, you know, uh, finally they recognized me as one of the best players on the team, put me and our previous All-American on the field at the same time. We went into game one, we lost the game. Um, me and my offensive coordinator had words. I've never been the disrespectful type, so I couldn't really evaluate what I said disrespectfully to him. But ultimately, it just came across as disrespectful, and I just wanted to let him know how hard I was working. So eventually that escalated. Uh, I kind of not kept my distance, but I was quiet. It was kind of like I didn't really enjoy football anymore, if you may, when I was playing at Western. It was kind of a struggle, and it was like, I don't want to put no dirt on anyone's name or anything like that, so I just won't even go into details, but it was just a hard time just for me and what I was going through and what I wanted to do. So the ultimate decision came down between me and Coach Clark, <coughs> who was our head coach at the time. Coach Clark made the decision uh, and told me um, he knows where I want to take my career, and as everything is going right now, he couldn't really help me and be on my side for everything that was going on. So instead of like trying to put me through it and stuff, he gave me the chance, the opportunity to transfer and found and find a better opportunity. And he said that he would help, also help me find that better opportunity. And that he did. He reached out to many coaches on my behalf and told them things about me. So eventually uh, it led to his old coach, uh, Coach Billy Hickman, who coaches at OC at Tabor. 
and at the time and uh they kind of connected and then i had a player that previously played at mount sack with me named sean kelly and he talked to him about me and it all kind of worked uh they came and visited me out in nashville and man they just showed me all the love and they were very welcome and opened their arms to me as a coaching staff and just felt that i was able to fit the mold of what he was trying to do as a coach with coach billy hickman and um I took it and ran with it, man, and I really don't regret the decision, man, because that was just, Coach Hickman is a coach that I hold dear to me, so that was the situation that led up to me going from Western New Mexico to Tabor my senior year. Why did you leave Tabor early? Uh, again, I fell into some more problems with the turmoil with uh, eligibility, you know. I was not eligible because I didn't have three units paid for in for my transcript over the summer and I had to work up more money to pay in my transcripts to be able to be eligible and then I got enough money throughout the school year so I got eligible game five and uh, after all the trials of what was going on in college and like you know favorites and like just to trials and tribulations I just figured man it's time for me to set my path on being a professional, you know. That's the path that I've been trying to travel this whole time and was what I really ultimately came out of Nashville for, you know. It's always been not just my dream, but an aspiration of mine and I, why I worked so hard. So it was just time. It's the reason why I left early. It was time for me to leave college and it was time for me to take the step and to being a professional and seeing what I really had. So that's what it really came down to it was time. How did you like being being in the XFL? I mean, it was a blessing, man. It was a blessing in disguise. It was a great opportunity. I mean, at first going through the trials and the camps and the and the summer showcases, I figured that um, I was going to get picked up in the draft, but I didn't. And I mean, Coach Moss took a good liking to me, and he gave me the opportunity, and I just took it and ran with it. What's one of your favorite memories from the XFL? I think just as a whole process, I would say my first experience with the XFL with the Summer Showcase, I, uh, we had ran 40s and stuff like that and did testing. And Coach Moss wasn't really impressed with everybody's testing and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So we kind of called everybody up before we went out and did drills and stuff like that as individuals and receivers. He was kind of like, everybody got to get this stuff together, you know. Uh, these drills not really looking that good. This next segment of the showcase, you know what I'm saying? We got to put it together and make it a lot better and make it make it right, make it feel like something. You know what I'm saying? He said he wanted to be the best showcase that was put on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I really felt that, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like everybody felt that, you know what I'm saying? So it, it kind of sparked everybody. and. As we kept on going throughout the camp and then we went one-on-ones and then we got into the drills where we went half Phil Skelly, he kind of like, out of everybody that was out there, he called me out, you know? It's so many people out there, quarterbacks, receivers, you know what I'm saying? All type of receivers, running backs even. And it's like green tights, you know what I'm saying? Can't nobody stop the dude in the green tights, you know what I'm saying? I know all camp, it was, could, wasn't nobody able to hold me, you know what I'm saying? I've been working for it, so there it was. It was my moment and like, I think, that moment out of everything, it's like, he was like, as I walk up to the line, he was like, whoever stopped green tights, I can guarantee you, you probably get you a contract because I ain't not one person stopped green tights out here. And, and green tights this and green tights that, you know what I'm saying? And, and then he's like, told the DB, stop green tights, you know what I'm saying? And in the middle of the rep, while the rep going up, the quarterback say go. And like, I'm looking at him and when the quarterback say go, I look at my man and make a move on him and then, I started talking to Coach Moss in the middle of the route, you know, like, you think this dude gonna be able to stop me, psych, you know what I'm saying? And like, the quarterback don't throw it to me, but he like, ooh, you was wide open and didn't get on the quarterback. Why didn't you throw it to him? But he threw a completion. And I'm like, you know, go celebrate with the dude in the end zone, no matter if it was through to me. Like, I was obviously seen, but like, it's about being a team player. It's about the next step, you know what I'm saying? Always putting it together and being great. So like. You know what I'm saying? I went and celebrated with my team. I ain't worried about getting the ball, but like that's one of the most memorable moments for me because not it wasn't necessarily my time to shine. I didn't get the ball and I didn't shine in that sense and moment, but I was taking notice out of everybody at the camp at that moment on the offensive side of the ball for sure. 
So like that was a pretty important moment for me for the XFL Summer Showcase and I think that's what got me into the XFL ultimately was me catching this eye amongst many at that point in the moment. So you just recently got in a car accident. Uh, can you explain what happened? An 85-year-old lady said she forgot to decelerate and instead hit the accelerator on the turn where she was supposed to yell at a green light and we went head on and hit the car. Can you tell me what injuries that you got from the accident? Um, a laceration on my left jaw, pretty swollen left jaw, uh, elbow, kind of bruised up, right abdominal, bruised up real bad, um, right knee, right ankle, say my MCL, you know what I'm saying, and my back, lower back, just a bunch of pain, swelling, God cover me, no broken bones, no internal organs that we know of as of right now. The next rehab, trying to get back better, get back to four twos, man, you know, it's gonna be the issue right here. In between the vertebras, all the people in between every vertebra at every level. So you have more uh, weight division of on every disc. So you have less weight on one disc and it's kind of distributed throughout the spine. Okay. So that's, you know, without having any injury. Imagine when you just got a whiplash injury and your spine just uh, went, uh, you know, went forward and back in a motion that has not moved before. So what happens is these muscles here on both sides start elongating. Mm -hmm. And when they elongate, they start breaking down to kind of hold on in the integrity of the spine and make sure the spine is in good health, mm -hmm. okay? 1.2 or 1.5, and you know, eventually in five years from now, 10 years from now, you're looking at your body and you're healthier than what you are right now, okay? So what it matters on the small things that you do throughout the day, mm -hmm. and you know, therapy is, Part, big part of what you do and maintenance work just like you know you do maintenance work on your car if you maintain it you you know your you, life expenses you require becomes longer so the, that's a big thing and then also everything that you do form when you exercise the way you practice or you exercise is a big deal and uh, also stretching is the number one thing and uh, when it comes down to muscle health mm -hmm. so muscle like to be constricted so be stronger but at the same time lengthening and that's where the stretching happens so you need to do a lot of stretching okay. to allow the muscles to kind of regenerate. Be, yeah, yeah. regenerate a lot faster okay so uh we haven't really dig deep into the therapy yet so the uh, first thing we will do right now is uh, actually work on um, adjustment. Okay, take deep breath.
Throughout this whole journey, who do you feel helped you the most? Uh, first, I want to say God, man. You know, because you get nowhere without God. And then I want to say the person that really introduced God into my life is Miss Kimberly uh, Harris Fields, you know. So, how you doing, Miss Kim? I'm great. Uh, I just came to <laughs> ask hot. you. Yes, very. I just came to ask you how do you feel about your son and where he is at in life and what was the teaching that you think brought him to here? I'm very happy where he is right now. Um, he's in a peaceful and positive place and that's always a good thing. Um, his raising has to directly affect Christ. Every great king has went through trials, has went through stumbling blocks and failures as well as success. But everything that they went through shows their growth, shows how they've overcome it all to be the king that they are. And Jesus went through a lot to become the king that he is. And we just wanted to show him that that is the image of life that you should reflect. That even though you go through all kinds of struggles, all kinds of adversities, you're going to always overcome. And when you do overcome, it's going to be for greatness. So as long as he has God in his heart and in his mind and... He lines up with our teachings. I'm very happy with the life he's living. She uh, she helped me the most. She helped me understand what I think I work for the most in having a future family and kids. And what I always say for my unborn, like that's what I ultimately like. The ultimate goal is for to take care of the kids that I don't have yet. And hopefully I'm blessed to have kids. So like, Miss Kim, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Miss Kim, because she changed my life. Like, <laughs> I was a wild boy and she changed my life. She took a kid that was, you feel me, buried under the concrete and put water to him and made a flower. You know what I'm saying? And I think she helped me the most. So I've been seeing all over social media the flash cap. Uh, can you explain what that is? Yeah, man, it's uh, the future. No, I'm just saying, man, it's... Uh, it's for the kids, man. It's um, you can come with me, and where you can take your time out. And if a lot of people think they like my game and how I move, you have a chance to mimic and follow and train with me. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things, and it's one of those things where we take our time and teach the people that don't know. You know what I'm saying? I teach the people that don't know, and mainly kids, man. Mainly the kids that I'm able to touch and teach and preach to, you know what I'm saying? The things that I was taught and the things that I know so that they don't follow the same wrong things that I did and can come correct, you know? So the flash camp is one of the things that's that we're gonna work on with building our intellect as well as our, as our physical being, as well as our faith, you know what I'm saying? Spiritually, you know what I'm saying? And what we're doing. So the flash camp is just, it's just something I really want y'all to tap into and check out. It's not something that's I can really talk about, but what I can say is it's for the kids, man. It's for the future and it's the right technique, proper technique. It's things that's gonna propel the kids to be great in life. We are looking for D1 scholarships, of course, cause that's what every kid wants. But we also looking to teach the young man that football isn't forever as well as the scholarship to get their education because that's the most important thing in the situation that they're in. But of course, we're looking for our players to be the best. We're looking for the kids to be the best, to be talked about about being the best. So like, we have a really big high expectation for flash camp, you know, but it's starting on a small spectrum, you know, so. And the main thing about the flash camp is we are going to, so to speak, blow our kids up. We are going to talk good about our kids. We're going to give you their weaknesses and what they're not that good at. But we're going to give you what they're good at. And when they come to show, they're going to show what they're good at, man. And that's really what I want to get a flash camp and make it about because that's something that I never had. Like, people wasn't telling me what I was good at or what, what, what I was so great at. It was always what I needed to work on. That's why I'm such a hard worker and there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to take kids and make what they good at and make it flourish. We're going to work on what they bad at. We're going to make it good, you know what I'm saying? But we're going to take what they good at and really show that they good at it. And 
hopefully we can get them to live out their dreams, man, whether it be a Rivals camp, a Nike camp, a U.S. Army All-American, or NFL contract, XFL contract, IFL contract, whatever it may be, that's what the Flash Camp is. We want to help kids from there and beyond, including in business opportunities. And, you know what I'm saying, physical therapist training, we have all that type of knowledge on deck, so that's what the Flash Camp is. It's just for the kids, for the future, you know what I'm saying? So tap in, TFC, flash that under the mask. What's next? Uh, I don't really think we decide what's next. If you must know what's next in my mind, what I envision, uh, I envision a boy that started off with nothing. I envision a boy that was sleeping in the washroom on a bench. I envision a boy that was having to stay up at night from sleeping on the concrete so he don't get bugs in his shit. You know what I'm saying? His clothes, man. I envision that. And then I envision a person smiling with a helmet, pulling it off in the XFL. You know what I'm saying? Even then, I didn't know what was next, but I kept pushing. So what's next is whatever I allow to be next, whatever I lead myself to follow to be next. And what I feel is next for me is greatness. And with that, that's a wrap on the Flash documentary. Flash that man, tap in under the mat. Man, I just wanna say thank you for watching this documentary. Uh, all the way from Nashville, all the way to California, man. Grinding, taking my opportunity everywhere I can get it. Flash that. Flash out. What's your name? Mm. Look at this bitch. I'm king. You're king? Okay. You're my, you're my little cousin? Yeah. You love me? I love you too. All right. Wait, you think I got a good work ethic? Huh? You think I work hard? All right. You think I got a big future ahead of me? Yeah. I appreciate you, man. And what you think my biggest flaw is? You got a big head? Me, I got a big head. Yeah, I gotta get it together, don't I? Yeah. Say I love you. Say hi, camera. Say hey, world. Say this is the flash, and I'm tapping in. Do you like that? Say tapping in. Tapping in.